Let's take a look at this question now. Obtain all zeros of the polynomial, this one, if two of the zeros are given as square root 5n minus square root 5. So how are we going to solve a question like this? Now recall that a zero of a polynomial, if let's say alpha is a zero of a polynomial px, that simply means that x minus alpha is a factor of this polynomial, right? That means when we take this polynomial and we divide this by x minus alpha, we will get remainder, remainder will be zero. So in other words, uh, now here this is our polynomial, right? So we can write our polynomial px as it will be something, one factor times another factor times another factor times another factor. So why have we written four factors? The degree of this polynomial is four. So we can maximum have four factors. It does not mean that we will have all four factors. We can have four factors, we can have three or two or less, right? So, but we can have maximum of four factors. Now, what is given to us here is that these two are zeros of the polynomial. So from here we can tell, so for if plus square root five is a fact, is a zero, then we can say that x minus square root five will be one of the factors. So maybe this, we can think of it as this factor. And similarly, we can think of x minus, minus square root five, or simply x plus square root five is going to be another factor. So let's say this is hypothetically speaking this. In other words, what we have is we have our given polynomial and I'm just trying to save some space and uh, do less writing. So I'm not repeating this entire polynomial, but px is essentially this guy here. So this is equal to some factor, which we don't know, we have to find out some factor here times, now c in this case is x minus square root 5, and then the other one is x plus square root 5. So this is essentially what we have right now. Or we can rewrite this as we can say this is as a times b will be simply px, let's write px, divided by this times this. Now recall this is nothing in the, uh, this is simply uh, a plus b times a minus b, which is a square minus b square, which will be x square minus square root 5 square, which will be 5. So what we have is now these two factors we can find out simply by dividing uh, the polynomial by x squared minus 5. Let's do it next. Let's clean this up over here. So now let's do the long division. So px is this. So let's write it x4 plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus 5x plus 10. So this is our polynomial px and we want to divide this by, um, so here we want to divide this by, let's change maybe the color a little bit. And uh, we want to divide this by x squared minus five. So now when we divide this by this, so we will get x squared over here. And when we multiply, we will get x power four and let's write minus five x squared over here under the x squared term. So when we subtract, the sign changes cancel out now x cubed comes down here, x cubed. Now this will be minus seven x squared plus five or minus two x squared. And these two terms will straight come down. So minus five x plus 10. Now we will divide this by this, so we'll get plus x. And when we multiply, so we will get x squared times this will, oh, we should be doing x times this. So x cubed minus five x, so over here. And now the sign will change again. Cancel, cancel. So here we get minus 2x squared plus 10. Now minus 2x squared by x squared is simply minus 2. So we write minus 2 over here. So we get minus 2x squared and minus 2 times minus 5 is plus 10. So now we see that we get, so this cancels out and this cancels out. So we get 0. So now when we when we do the division, we get this. In other words, this is basically our a times b is equal to x squared plus x minus 2. Now what we want to do, we want to actually break it down into two factors. And we see that we can actually do middle term factorization here. So we have minus 2 and here coefficient is 1. So it's essentially minus 2. So we can write minus 2 as, we can split minus 2 as 2 times 1. Now 
one of the terms will be negative for minus 2 and uh, when we add it has to be plus 2 so we can have the we can have this as plus this is minus so let's break this down over here so we can write this as x squared the middle term we can write this as plus 2x minus x minus 2 or we can take x common we will get x plus 2 and here we can take minus 1 common x plus 2 or we get x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. So these are our two factors. So the first factor is this. So let's write it over here. So x plus 2 and the second factor is x minus 1. Now recall that we are not trying to find factors but we are trying to find out all the remaining zeros. So pay attention to the question. So if x plus 2 is a factor that means the zero here will be x equals minus 2. Similarly, if x plus x minus 1 is a factor, that means the zero of the polynomial here will be x equals 1. So essentially, like we did before, we will basically take the factor and we'll equate it to 0 to find out the root. So this will give us x equals minus 2. This will give us x equals 1. So these are the other two zeros of our polynomial.